Jan, what inspired you to study physics? This is very, very old from when I was a kid. I liked very much uh, science and mathematics and um, yeah, this is what inspired me. That's something I can recognize in myself as well. So, and more specifically for the attosecond physics, what inspired you to choose that as your career? Oh, I, I didn't really uh, choose that. What inspired me to, uh, to choose atomic physics and the interaction between light and matter was uh, very good teachers at the yeah. end of my studies. So it led me to watch this field. And now you're paying it forward as well, I can guess. Yeah. <laughs> so what contributions do you see your research having on the scientific community? The story is only beginning. I think we, we, there is a lot of research to do with the tools we have developed. I, I hope that we can um, understand better our world uh, and, and maybe in particular the, the interaction between light and matter uh, with, with these tools. And this can lead to, uh, to progress in, in, in research as well. Is there any application in particular? Where I, you I, I think uh, um, there are several applications, but probably in, uh, in chemistry or condensed matter. I think if we can understand a little bit better the, the maybe beginning of chemical reaction, these kind of things, this will lead to, to applications. And maybe a question you've gotten a hundred times before now. Uh, what does a Nobel Prize mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. It's a lot of, uh, of course, recognition. And uh, it means also that uh, to me that I, now I, I should, I don't know, I don't want to say model, but try, try to inspire all the people, especially young, young women, to, uh, to uh, do a career in, in science. You definitely are a role model. It's very big that a, a female researcher and also a Swedish researcher yeah. <laughs> got the Nobel Prize. So uh, you told me, us today that you had a postdoc here at Chalmers. Yeah. What, what did you do here? Yeah, this was um, uh, together with uh, Joran van Dien, yeah, mm -hmm. Professor Chalmers. I met him uh, during my thesis work. I was looking uh, for help to interpret our experimental data. And uh, this led to uh, actually uh, two or three visits to, to Gothenburg, first as a PhD student and then as, as a postdoc. So I stayed six months at Chalmers doing, doing theory. Uh, I think this was very important for, for me. So and I liked Chalmers very much. And um, I learned a lot and um, was very good uh, to become the scientist as I am now. Is there anything in particular from Chalbers that you've taken with you since and that you think a lot about afterwards? I, I became more independent scientist. I think this is, this is maybe what I learned in Chalmers. And this was very important because the discovery that led to this Nobel Prize was exactly afterwards. And, and then I was able to continue on my own. So maybe this transition to, uh, to become, uh, uh, to get some scientific independence, I, I learned it uh, uh, here at Chalmers. Regarding the scientific field, is there anything like, as a scientist, or you enjoy extra much? I like research very much, and I, I would like to add that I like teaching very much, and I think this goes hands in hands. For me, uh, teaching is a very nice uh, uh, complement to, uh, to research. For example, in the sense that uh, in, when you do research, sometimes you ask yourself, oh, what is this going to lead to? Is it going to be useful for society? You never know. Um, however, teaching is directly useful. I like very much teaching, interacting with students. So, what advice would you give to young science students out there, especially young girls and women? I would say that they should do what they, they, uh, what they like, what they, uh, they think is interesting and uh, exciting. I think they should uh, give it a chance and, and go for it. And, and uh, I like to say follow the, their intuition towards a certain area. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Well, thank you very much.